Hello class, my name is Demetrius Wilson and this will be the first PowerPoint presentation slash lecture that you guys will have posted in your etudes for you to review. I'll try to keep them below 15 minutes, I'll try to be short and succinct and definitely uh, give you guys some real world experience and background in regards to each of the topics. So as we start we have human relations, a background in chapter one. So obviously if you want to talk about human relations, we have to know where human relations came from, who are the founding fathers, where did the background begin. So our learning objectives, which is always good for a chapter uh, to know exactly what you're attempting to learn prior to actually learning it. This thing called backwards design in which you say, okay, we want to fly to the moon, now what are the steps that we need to take in order to get to the moon? So our learning objectives are define human relations, explain the importance of human relations in business, and it is very important, discuss the challenges of human relations as these factors affect success in business, and identify what the study of human relations does not include. So obviously we need to know what encompass is in human relation, and then we also need to know what is not necessarily included. A couple more learning objectives describe the areas of emphasis for human relations in today's workplace. I work with a lot of individuals. I'll give you some more about my background throughout the class, but it is very important to uh, emphasize human relations and good human relations in your, in your business uh, throughout the workplace and with other businesses as well. And discuss a short history of the study of human relations. So human relations, what is it? It's a skill or ability to work effectively through or with people. When I say work through, that doesn't mean run through them as if you were tackling them in the foot, on the football field, but it means uh, as a manager to uh, have your people to do the right and appropriate things within the workplace. It requires understanding uh, people's needs, weaknesses, talents, and abilities. Uh, one thing that was taught to me a long time ago was to play towards individual strengths, not towards their weaknesses. Uh, how people work together in groups to satisfy individual needs and group objectives. As you guys can see in colleges and also in high schools now, they're uh, putting four desks together uh, and having people work together in groups very early on so they know how to act and work within the workplace. And you'll see a distinct uh, difference between an individual who's gone through that process and someone who's never worked in groups prior to getting into the workplace. Uh, you'll gain the organizational perspective, monitor and maintain the relationships among members to succeed. So as a manager and as a leader, you must monitor these relationships. So what are the reasons for studying human relations? Uh, you have human rights that require using uh, tact, trust, and diplomacy with greater skill. Uh, you have internal customers. So if I'm in a, a company and we sell widgets, and I have our external customers. We're nice to those external customers because we know that we need their money. But you also have your internal customers, people who work in different departments in the same department as you. So you have to be nice to those internal customers as well. So it's departments, employees, or employees in other departments within an organization. Uh, the global marketplace, emphasis on people as human resources, a renewed emphasis on working in groups as we've uh, previously discussed, and increasing diversity in the workplace. That is very, very important. Uh, human relations in different roles. So managers, uh, for those of you who are already managers and those of you who I know are going to be managers in the future, listen closely to these tips. Uh, retain employees longer. Uh, retention in regards to employees is a big thing today. Uh, increase productivity and ability to provide employees with an enjoyable environment. If people are enjoying uh, what they're doing, then uh, they're less likely to actually leave the company. Uh, entrepreneurs, uh, they organize and assume the risk of being uh, uh, beginning a business and an enterprise, uh, ability to work with people and fulfill their needs. And employees make a good impression on superiors and peers and develop interpersonal skills. Uh, current challenges in human relations, and I can guarantee you that there are many. Uh, increased competition in the workplace. Uh, small businesses are pressured to meet the high international standards of the foreign market. Uh, you know, especially if you, you have something, it's innovative, you come out with a new product, but then somebody else comes out with that same type of product right behind you. So the marketplace is very, very competitive. 
uh, huge multinational companies dominate the economy. Uh, I see this a lot in my industry that uh, you'll see individuals that say, oh, you know, we've got this good business, it's successful, but then you see the bigger company come in and uh, kind of take over. Uh, higher paying jobs are for all age groups. Uh, you know, we still have a lot of baby boomers out there in the, in the workplace, and uh, a lot of them are not really retiring because uh, one of the things we'll talk about in latter chapters is uh, the sandwich generations and the fact that they're taking care of their children and also taking care of uh, their parents. Uh, strength for some, from uh, strength of some Asian countries uh, with ever increasing share of the world economy, uh, most specifically China. Uh, dual career families, uh, additional financial pressures that you need uh, both individuals uh, in, the, in the home to work and time needed for child care. And then also those questions come up, say, hey, is it even beneficial uh, to, uh, for one of, the, uh, one of the parents to work because child care uh, costs so much? Additional challenges in human relations, uh, single parent families and divorce, uh, so different roles carried on by single parents results in a spillover effect of, of frustration uh, for, for both the parents and the children. And emotional uh, recovery after a divorce, so uh, emotional recovery, like I said, for the parents as well as the children. Uh, two generations of dependence, dependents, uh, as I spoke of before, uh, sandwich generation with elderly dependent uh, parents and children, and this is more common uh, than people uh, may really uh, think and uh, you know I, I, it's rare that I have a class that there isn't at least one or two individuals in that exact situation. Uh, so what human relations is not? It's not the study of understanding human behavior in order to manipulate others. Although you can read this book very thoroughly, listen to my lectures, and you could manipulate others, but that's not what you're supposed to do with it. Uh, it's not a cure-all or a quick fix for deep and ongoing personal problems. So we all have personal problems. It's not going to solve everything, but I can guarantee you it will solve some of the problems that you have. And some of those problems can be solved by just taking a look inside and fixing things with yourself. And uh, it's not common sense. Uh, some people will just say, oh, well, hey, you know, that's common sense. Demetrius, well, no, it's, it's not all just common sense. Uh, it is a study, it is a science. It's kind of merger between psychology and business. Uh, so major goals and emphasis areas of human relations, uh, personal development and growth. That's the main thing. Uh, people always laugh when I say, you know, I have like 50 New Year's resolutions, but I write them down and I, you know, I try to improve every year. So that's the uh, personal development and growth. So maybe I have 50 because, you know, maybe I'm just, you know, kind of slacking behind the rest of you guys. But um, I, I do feel like I have a lot of things that I have to work on. And, you know, the quicker you realize that you have a lot of things to work on, the, the easier it is. Uh, satisfying the objectives of the organization, right? So, you know, they pay you as an as a employee and you, uh, you know, receive your paycheck. And for, for that paycheck, they want certain things and they want certain output as an organization. Uh, all related to self-esteem, mutual respect, self-awareness, and self-disclosure, communication skills, group dynamics, and motivation, all of which we will discuss in uh, the ongoing chapters uh, that we review. Uh, so self-esteem, so your feeling of confidence and worth of, as a person. Uh, lower self-esteem is related to mental health problems, uh, alcoholism, anxiety, and depression. A higher self-esteem improves attitudes, job morale, overall quality of life. Uh, I joke around, but this is a true story. Uh, you know, I didn't always have the, the greatest attitude uh, at work, and uh, you know, just you know, one of the funniest things, I would get emails, and uh, you know, I would respond back to the email, and I wouldn't put, you know, at the bottom, you have your signature, and you probably put like thank you or something like that. And I wouldn't thank you. I would say you should be thanking me, you know, for responding to your email. So. Um, you know, I always didn't have the, the greatest attitude, and I don't know if it was an epiphany or what, but one day I woke up and I said, you know, I'm not going to spend my time or energy, you know, being angry or mad. I'm going to have a good attitude, have good morale within the company, and see where it takes me. And it, and it definitely, uh, you know, took me a, a lot further than I, than I would have been if I had a bad attitude. Uh, so an overall quality of life, uh, you know, if you're mad, depressed, sad, and everything, you know, that's the, the, the end result that you're going to get. You know, when you're, when you're happy, I'm not saying that everything's going to go perfectly, but uh, things are going to go much smoother. Uh, mutual respect. So positive consideration or regard that two people have for each other exists only when self-esteem is stable. So if your self-esteem is stable, then you can have mutual respect uh, for someone else. Uh, required by people at all levels in an organization to perform at their best. And that is a definite requirement. 
uh, areas of major emphasis, self-awareness, knowledge of how an individual is perceived by others, right? So you have to understand how you are perceived by others. One thing that, you know, you always hear is that perception is reality. So how they perceive you is what the reality in their mind truly is. Uh, Self-disclosure, a process of letting other people know all your own thoughts and feelings, or reflects the positive side of human relations. And communication skills, also important, uh, communicating, sending ideas and thoughts, and having them received in the intended way. Now, if they're not received in the intended way, then that's not communication, that's miscommunication. If I intended for you to hear ABC and you heard XYZ, then that's actually miscommunication as opposed to communication. Uh, group dynamics, very, very important. Uh, ways in which uh, groups operate, joint performance, understanding conflict management, uh, motivation is the force that gets people to do their tasks, right? What motivates you? Is it money, uh, which is uh, extrinsic, or is it, you know, uh, somebody recognizing you, uh, which is intrinsic, that, that good feeling that you, you have for the good job uh, well done? Uh, derives from the needs of individuals and of a group, a major element in understanding human relations. A brief history of human relations, the Knights of Labor, uh, 1869, denounced bad working conditions and unfair treatment in workplaces. Robert Owen proposed that treating workers uh, better would increase productivity and profits. Uh, Andrew Err uh, wrote a detailed study of manufacturers and their management processes. Uh, Max Weber proposed a bureaucratic approach uh, that focused on being interpersonal and rational. Uh, that's a little timeline. You can uh, uh, review that on your own. All PowerPoints uh, will be uh, posted to your E2 site as well. Uh, human relations is a science, so bureaucracy, formal organization in which each person has specific duties and responsibilities. These, these are things that you're supposed to do, A, B, and C, and is assigned to only one supervisor. Now, there are other type of organizations in which uh, uh, individual could have two supervisors, uh, which is, does not always work out uh, that great, but there are specific uh, organizations that have that uh, for certain reasons. And scientific management is a management system based upon scientific and engineering principles. Uh, kind of outdated, uh, but this is kind of where human relations all began. Uh, so human relations is a science, a scientific management. So Frederick Taylor's approach, managers should carefully select and train workers for specific tasks, try to motivate workers to increase productivity. Uh, you know, I try and do that every day. I'm always successful. Definitely not. Uh, sometimes am I successful? Yeah, yes, I am. Sometimes it depends on the individual. Uh, Frank, uh, Frank Gilbreth and Lillian Gilbreth, uh, pioneers in uh, time and motion study, uh, redefined brick laying process, taught the importance of standard work days, uh, relaxed and regular lunch breaks, and periodic rest periods. And uh, Mary uh, Parker Follett, uh, workers should be involved in decisions affecting them. Uh, workers, pl uh, workplace must be dynamic, and managers must maintain positive relationship with their workers. If you if you're not you you kind of lead the ship. If you're not positive as a manager, then I can guarantee your uh, your subordinates or your employees or your associates are not going to be uh, positive either. Uh, the Hawthorne experiment uh, conducted by Elton Mayo and his colleagues, uh, the conclusions were that workers perform better when someone was paying attention to them. So they turn the lights up, they perform better. They turn the lights down, they perform better. Again, and it was just because they were being paid attention to. Uh, so a relationship that has formed naturally in the workplace made up of an informal organization. So informal organization is made up of ever-changing set of relationships and interactions that are not formally uh, put together. So later on we'll talk about informal and formal groups and how those uh, get created and evolve. Uh, human relations and management, Great Depression, labor unions gain power, the Wagner Act of 1935 and Union Acts, you'll read about that. World War II, uh, depression was showing uh, some signs of lifting uh, treatment of workers temporarily improved. Uh, theory X and Y, I want to get that right before the video ends, so introduced by Douglas McGregor, influence thinking about both management and human relations. Theory X, the managers see workers as lacking ambition, disliking work, and wanting security above all else. So they're basically saying you got to throw some money at these people in order for them to do anything. And then you have Theory Y, managers who see workers as happy uh, to work, able to assume responsibility, and quite creative. In reality, I would say is a good manager going to need a little little bit of theory X and a little bit of theory Y in you. <clears throat> and last but not least, we have human relations history of individual. Uh, you'll read about Eric uh, Byrne, Carl Rogers, uh, W. Edwards Deming, and a total quality management. So that's going to be uh, the end of our first uh, PowerPoint lecture. Make sure you read the chapter, and there will be a quiz for you to take on each chapter 
uh, at the very end of each uh, section. Have a good day and a great week.